Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nikhil, and I joined uh, Running Mate uh, in uh, June uh, 2020 as a sysops administrator, and uh, currently I am working with OUP project uh, as a DevOps engineer. And uh, I have worked uh, closely with Terraform, and I have an idea of cloud formation. So uh, in this specific uh, and uh, uh, in this specific presentation, I have tried to give you the overall overview of the AWS cloud formation and HashiCorp Terraform. So we will be uh, first starting with the overviews of the topics. So we'll be checking what is the cloud formation. What are the key concept of the cloud formations, the pros and cons of using that. And then we are going to compare that cloud formation with the Terraform orchestration tool. And in Terraform, uh, we are going to see uh, what actually Terraform is and uh, the difference between Terraform and Ansible. So Ansible is another uh, uh, orchestration uh, or configuration tool, uh, which is being used uh, way before the Terraform. And uh, then we are going to see the architecture, how the Terraform works, the Terraform architecture, and some common commands that we are going to use. And in this session, I will be also uh, giving you a practical example of uh, how to implement and uh, deploy a Terraform uh, script uh, with the help of on AWS uh, platform. So let's start. First, uh, we will go to uh, what is the cloud formation. So basically, uh, it's an infrastructure as a code provider, and uh, it can be uh, standardized using templates only. So these templates uh, are basically uh, the resources which the which we are going to uh, uh, deploy in the AWS Cloud Formation. So these templates include all the resources in the, as a code platform. And uh, the one thing uh, which AWS Cloud Formation help us to is to uh, it get, gives us update at each step that we have defined inside that template. And in case if any step fail, it automatically rollbacks and it destroys the previous uh, created infrastructure uh, resources, uh, which are created uh, during the execution of that uh, cloud formation stack. And uh, it, this is this uh, template help us to easily scale our uh, infrastructure to multi region in case our business is growing and if we re uh, really need a, a high availability architecture for our application so we can use this template and we can uh, set up the infrastructure in other regions as well uh, now uh, we will be talking about the key concept of uh, cloud formation so there are two ways uh, that we can uh, create our templates in cloud formation so first way is using a yaml format file and the second way is uh, using a JSON format file. Uh, as of now, uh, people are mostly using uh, uh, YAML file because uh, the structure of the file and uh, it uh, looks very pretty clean. So people are going with uh, YAML file only most of the time. And but uh, again, there is JSON is uh, another alternative format file that we can use to define our templates in cloud formation. And uh, these templates specifically uh, include the AWS resources only, since uh, it is used for uh, is it is provided by AWS, and it is uh, mainly uh, focused on uh, creating these uh, services and uh, uh, resources in AWS Cloud Formation uh, using the uh, AWS CLIs. Uh, but there are some concern, like there are some examples where you can see uh, the uh, people are still using uh, cloud formation to launch infrastructure in gcp so there is definitely a uh, uh, no, uh, uh, development is going on right now with people and people are trying a lot of uh, different things with it so we are still not sure if we can uh, you know only use the uh, uh, cloud formation to access the aws resources only Okay, so uh, here I have tried to give you an example of how a normal uh, YAML file looks like in the cloud formation, which we, we can use in our template. So this first part here, uh, it is the uh, uh, resource uh, name, uh, the, the name of the resource or the name of the function that we are declaring. And here you can see there's a Lambda function, then uh, uh, the type of that resource, which is Lambda function. And then inside that, we are going to um, add some properties to it. And we are going to attach roles. 
and this way uh, uh, we can uh, you know implement our uh, cloud formation template inside the uh, aws cloud formation stacks so this is the actual format and uh, these are the two formats that we can use to define our templates in cloud formation some other key concepts are uh, stacks so stacks is basically a, a collection of aws's aws resources that you can manage a single unit so uh, there can be uh, multiple uh, resources uh, would be required to deploy application and all those resources can be uh, stacked within a single unit using the, uh, this stack concept inside aws uh, aws uh, cloud formation and uh, there is another advanced concept called nested stack which allows you to uh, uh, you know uh, refer these uh, different uh, template uh, template stacks in another uh, another stacks where you can you don't have to rewrite the whole code you can just refer these uh, templates within uh, other templates so i will give you an example here So here you can see, um, I'll just zoom in. So stack A is our root stack, which is calling, uh, you know, this nested stack in case if anything he requires. Okay, so in this A stack, if uh, I can uh, refer a, a sample of a stack, which is currently declared in D stack. So I don't have to rewrite the code again in the stack A, which is written here. I, do, I have to just refer it and it will go through this hierarchy and it will be implemented here. So this is a nested stack example on an overview level that you can see. So another key concept is the uh, change set so uh, this is uh, basically uh, a kind of a differ uh, thing that we can use in git as well which help us to understand uh, the differences between the uh, two uh, two stacks which are currently in cloud formation and uh, this will actually show you uh, the uh, things that are going to applied in an incremental way so if there is anything uh, which is changed in the existing stack and we are going to launch that stack the chain checks will come in place and it will check the difference in the uh, infrastructure code and it will update you with the current uh, current things that uh, it is going to deploy as per the uh, newly defined in uh, newly defined cloud formation stack so the pros and cons of using cloud formation so the first pro is definitely we can review the infrastructure changes uh, with the help of code itself and it can be easily integrated with the uh, continuous integration pipeline where you can use jenkins uh, puppet or chef these kind of tools and uh, it has a very large community support to uh, for, to follow to be followed so you can go through aws documentation aws forums in case if you need any help uh, the cons which i can see here uh, is uh, the normally the aws cloud formation uh, doesn't edit the existing resource it uh, deletes the uh, resource and creates a new one uh, which can definitely uh, impact uh, the application so let's say in case uh, if there is anything uh, any new name or a, at least a word or a letter is added in the cloud formation stack and it is pointing to a specific dynamo db then the uh, when we apply that cloud formation stack it will directly delete that dynamo db which is existing one with its data it is going to create a new with the name that we have recently added in the cloud formation stack so these kind of changes we have to be very much uh, careful when we are uh, you know checking with the cloud formation stack and we have to be uh, uh, very much uh, uh, you know vigilant in these cases where we have to review that uh, changes first and then we can only apply and uh, uh, there is a, a concept in that aws cloud formation where it actually stores the existing set of the uh, whole aws infrastructure that we are currently uh, managing in a in a specific file so uh, when we are using cloud formation and uh, we try to use uh, some aws uh, cli commands or we try to 
uh, do some manual changes in the existing infrastructure, which is actually the part of the AWS cloud formation. Then, then uh, when we are next time going to apply the AWS cloud formation, it is going to give us a lot of errors because uh, there are existing changes are done in the uh, cloud formation in the AWS uh, account itself manually, which is not uh, uh, you know comp uh, in, as comparison to the existing state of the cloud formation, it is not matching. So that can be uh, a really a pain in uh, pain in our work where uh, this drift happens when the states are not matching with the existing one. So we have to make sure that these are all, uh, you know, uh, have to be careful with uh, uh, the code changes and the uh, changes that we are doing manually. So normally, uh, the when we are using cloud formation, we uh, we can, you know, you know read only, we can give read only accesses to the people who are able to, uh, you know, use that uh, AWS, uh, AWS console. And in case of any changes are required, we only have to use cloud formation itself. So the states will be uh, updated uh, as per every uh, cloud formation application. So let's compare the cloud formation with Terraform. So Terraform, again, it's a completely open source tool and it is being used by uh, um, around a uh, lot of uh, uh, developers and uh, DevOps guys. Uh, who are using multiple uh, cloud providers in that case and not even cloud providers the services which are currently uh, given by terraforms are including a uh, third party services like uh, platform as services and some softwares as services so all these services are can be manageable through terraform itself so uh, cloud formation normally you can see cover the part of aws resources and not all the parts uh, there are some parts still which are currently in uh, uh, designing uh, a designing state uh, in case of cloud formation uh, management uh, but in case of terraform you can see all the services can be managed through uh, aws uh, through terraform uh, which includes the third party services and some other cloud form platforms as well so cloud formation manages the state within the managed service which is uh, i can say a plus point because uh, the state files are not uh, saved anywhere in local or any other repository it is going to be uh, managed by the aws itself uh, but in case of terraform when you apply something uh, the it uh, definitely depends on which environment you are running that terraform because the state file the updated state file will be stored only there which can be a uh, issue in case of there are multiple people who are trying to run the terraform so uh, in terraform we have to be careful with the state files and uh, there are options that uh, we, in Terraform we can save the state files in our disk in S3 bucket or in DynamoDB and uh, additional storage options that are uh, given by Terraform itself. And uh, cloud formation is uh, uh, have a uh, so basically modules is something that we uh, call to uh, you know uh, represent a specific part of a code and deploy it with the specific parameter itself when we are deploying that so in cloud formation uh, there are multiple ways to create a modules of a specific uh, infrastructure deployment uh, but uh, each of the, their ways have their pros and cons in case of cloud formation but when it comes to terraform the terraforms have its native support with modules and handling the models with terraform is way much simpler uh, as compared to the cloud formation so this is the whole comparison uh, as of now uh, between Terraform and Cloud Formation. Okay. So uh, any questions with the Cloud Formation as of now? Yeah, hi Nikhil. Uh, uh, just one, yeah, just one question. Uh, if you are talking like uh, nested stack, okay. Mm -hmm. So can we use uh, um, uh, one like I have to like create one stack and add some resources and then use one existing stack? I mean to say a nested type concept. So is it possible? Yeah. So nested stack is something uh, which help us to uh, you know uh, write a less code 
and uh, give the references of the stacks that we have uh, declared in some other cloud from confirmation stacks okay so this the, this is actually very advanced level uh, uh, you know coding with the cloud formation where we can use this nested stack so if i can uh, go through this link you can see uh, how the nested stack works and uh, there are multiple methods that we use so basically uh, I, if i i want to you know uh, compare the nested stack and the terraform modules so there are multiple ways to uh, you know ma manage these stacks and call it in their roots and everywhere but uh, in case of you know terraform terraform is pretty much simpler than uh, nested stack and we have a lot of uh, logical uh, components to be added in cloud, uh, terraform where we can you know uh, call the uh, reference uh, patterns of code uh, wherever we required with the required parameters declared in the code itself mm. okay okay yeah yeah thank you yeah sure, sure. Actually, I had another shade, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'll just uh, go through the Terraform now. Okay, so what is Terraform? So Terraform is basically a infrastructure provisioning tool, which uh, help us to uh, create and uh, manage the infrastructure at a code level. And Terraform it's a, is an open source tool, uh, which uh, which have a large community support uh, based on the number of services it is providing and number of provider it is currently working with, which include uh, all kind of uh, cloud cloud platforms, third party services, and some software as services platforms as well. Uh, So second point is uh, difference between Terraform and Ansible. Uh, so Ansible is uh, more of a configuration uh, tool for infrastructure where we can configure different aspects of infrastructure at OS level as well, at operating system level as well, where we manage our runbooks based on the uh, task that we needed to do. And uh, there are hosts that we can uh, define inside the Ansible part where we uh, need our task to be done and uh, normally it uh, help us in uh, you know deploying the application installing softwares and uh, deploying the infrastructure as well uh, but uh, when we compare it to the terraform terraform has a more advanced uh, uh, management at uh, at their code level while creating a terraf uh, while creating a infrastructure and uh, terraform is more of a imperative uh, you know declarative uh, a declarative a declarative code it uh, resides with that actually uh, just uh, we have to just say what resource that we require to be launched and terraform is going to take care of that there is no how steps are involved like what kind of steps should be needed to deploy that architecture that is completely will be handled by terraform while uh, we are uh, implementing or using the terraform so uh, Terraform is more of a declarative where we uh, declare the resources, but in case of Ansible, we have to make sure uh, the steps that are involved while creating a resource or uh, creating a application a deployment. So most of the time, Terraform is a is a you know a service that people use to provision an infrastructure, while Ansible is more of a configuration part infrastructure. Uh, but uh, we can say Ansible is uh, more matured because it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, came in market uh, very much before Terraform, and it it has a very large community of support. Uh, but Terraform is uh, something that is very uh, simple to understand and uh, very uh, fast to be uh, fast in case of execution also. So these are some things that uh, Terraform and Ansible have difference in between. So if you ask me, I can definitely uh, go for Terraform in cases of any infrastructure provision or creation or destroying the infrastructure or updating the infrastructure, which uh, uh, makes me standardize the every uh, infrastructure aspects of uh, the existing uh, AWS. And Ansible is something that I can uh, really do some you know, kind of a software installations that are required in my uh, existing infrastructure. At OS level, I need accesses to these infrastructure to make some changes. 
So these kind of things, which is a configuration part, are handled by Ansible. Uh, now, uh, what we'll do, we are going to uh, check the architectural architecture of the uh, Terraform. Like, what are the things that Terraform normally uh, have while they are applying? So, uh, we'll talk about input first. So, the config files is uh, a user provided file, which is uh, basically have a format as .tf file, which is a Terraform format. And it actually defines what on why, uh, what we need to configure to get the proper desired state of the infrastructure. Then there is a TF state file which normally gets created whenever we apply uh, apply the infrastructure, and we uh, make that infrastructure uh, to provision the all the resources that we required. And that time when that uh, infrastructure is created uh, with successfully, a state is stored in locally or anywhere where we pointing. And that store, uh, that state is going to be uh, referred in next deployment by the core. So core is a, another thing in Terraform, which uh, basically compares the current state and the desired state. And then it decides what uh, they need to be created, what needs to be updated or to be destroyed. In case of anything uh, needs to be created, it will uh, give us a output that these are the some of the uh, resources that needs to be created or needs to be updated. Uh, these are the some of the resources which are not needed so it will it is going to destroy them so core is inputs are go input goes to course then core connects with the providers so provider is something that uh, user defines in the input files it checks for the providers and it confirms that the provider is right and then the provider help us to create all those resources which are needed to uh, get the desired state so there are different type of providers, like I said before, there are AWS and GCP as a cloud providers. There are Kubernetes, which are platform as a services. And there are Fastly and Salesforce, which uh, which are uh, software as a services that can be used and provided by Terraform for automating and provisioning uh, the uh, services and resources bit. Uh, now we can move to uh, Terraform commands. So basically uh, there are um, these main five types of Terraform commands. So uh, whenever I'm creating a Terraform uh, file in my folder, I have to make sure that I first initialize that specific directory or folder with the supporting Terraform files so that uh, uh, we can implement the uh, other steps. Okay. In case my Terraform files are still there and I need to check if, it, if they are properly initialized, I can use Terraform validate command which uh, allows me to uh, check if the configuration of the current directory or the uh, folder where we are going to launch our Terraform templates is uh, updated. So it's checked and it confirms whether it is updated or not. Uh, then we use a Terraform plan. So Terraform plan is basically a, a validating command for the code itself, which actually validates the code and checks if Terraform can really do the changes that is required by the user. And uh, when it successfully completes, it shows the exact uh, exact uh, changes that is it is going to do with the proper uh, format inside the command from itself so that we can validate those changes and we can confirm and we can apply those changes for the further uh, further provisioning part. And uh, after the plan is successful, we can go to Terraform apply. So Terraform apply is actually in this case uh, connects with the AWS provider that we have given or any provider that we have given and it uh, creates all those resources that we have defined inside the form and then it uh, returns with error or either uh, returns with uh, the success message. So uh, it is always uh, we can say that Terraform plan is something that we really not sure that it can give all the errors. But Terraform apply is a uh, command where we understand the uh, errors or if something is still not going to be happened through the Terraform itself. So all these uh, plan and apply are the sum of the commands that we can use to validate our code and make changes and uh, we can execute them to actually create our resources. So once we apply a Terraform command, we can again use that same template to destroy the same resources that we have created. So Terraform destroys is just a thing that uh, it helps us to destroy all these resources which are currently executed by Terraform and created in the, inside the AWS resources. 
and uh, it uh, deletes all these resources and it uh, gives us the successful message also some cases if resources are attached with uh, each other in those cases i have seen that terraform uh, doesn't completely destroys because uh, these resources must be attached to some other resources so in that cases maybe you have to go to manually uh, go to aws console and detach those resources or there is provisioning uh, in the code itself that you can use to uh, detach those resources in the uh, destroy command itself so there are multiple ways if you deep dive into terraform and there is uh, there is logic uh, in, involved with the terraform that can help us to automatically generate the inputs and give it inside the terraform command itself which can be used to execute the infrastructure bit so uh, cloud formation practical uh, is really not possible here because cloud formation is uh, really something that uh, we should be checking with the uh, ops account itself so currently uh, to some issues i don't have the ops account but i have added a, a link here that we can use so i'll just show you that link So here you can see you you will got a different type of uh, templates that can be that are provided by AWS, and you can use these different templates to create your uh, existing cloud formation stack and apply it. And uh, it has a lot of things you can see here. You can view it in designers. You can directly launch a stack inside your AWS account. A lot of other things. So I'll provide this link inside this uh, itself. Okay. So before moving to uh, the Terraform practical, uh, do we have any questions or Terraform or maybe cloud formation? Yeah, Nikhil, uh, uh, this is regarding Terraform. Yeah, actually, this is something new for me. And just recently, I tried uh, some uh, sample script of my machine. So okay. uh, yeah, when I uh, yeah, initialize no, that Terraform unit uh, run the command, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is something like a, a folder get created, some hashi, and in, under that the AWS. So yes. something like is the HashiCorp that is the provider for Terraform or? Yeah, HashiCorp is uh, actually kind of an organization or institution. So HashiCorp is basically a software company which, uh, uh, you know, launched this Terraform uh, product. Okay. And they are managing currently the uh, all developments and everything. But however, it's open source, so not even HashiCorp. There are a lot of other, uh, a lot of other guys who are usually working with Terraform, uh, mm -hmm. working with some different uh, providers. That uh, they are uh, continuously, uh, you know, uh, giving, uh, contributing to the existing product, and they are releasing it uh, every every time. Whenever the new uh, new release is coming in or new function is coming in. So there are a lot of changes uh, currently uh, being done after the launch of the Terraform. So uh, you can see the versions of Terraforms are uh, pretty much multiple versions are there. So versioning, most of the time people also, uh, you know, face issues due to versions in Terraform. So we have to also make sure that uh, Terraforms are properly, uh, you know, version controlled throughout the infrastructure okay yeah and also there is someone command actually i saw that uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, terraform fmt that is format something so i saw there is if i change something uh, it gives them a result like it get file get changed is that for validate or like to check can you, which command you are talking about the fmt yeah. uh, terraform fmt terraform fmt okay yeah so it gives me output that something file if i change the file that it shows the file name 
particular net. Okay. Okay. So personally, I I haven't used this command as of now. So we are just working with apply plan and uh, destroy itself. Yeah, yeah. I'm we just can asking. Take a look at, yeah, yeah. We can definitely take a look into this. Uh, but is there any something you error you are getting while you are uh, you know uh, executing this command, or any issues that you are having during execution of this command? Uh, not yet. Just I get some uh, like validate when I use the validate command, then I saw some error in my files and all this stuff. Okay. okay. Yeah, and one more question, Anikil. Uh, yes. Uh, if I use uh, uh, one file that uh, variable dot tf to okay. define uh, variables. Yes. So uh, uh, whenever we use the particular value that use particular that default value, right? Hmm. So there are multiple ways to define your variables. So one file is the variable tf file, where we basically define our variables, and then we can use a var dot tf file where the actual variable values are stored. So defining variable and storing those variables is uh, something uh, different uh, in case of Terraform. So basically, when we are, you know, uh, so I'll when I will come to practical, you'll definitely understand more. Okay. So let me just go through it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's say if I, okay, what I'll do, I'll just create a new folder. I'm yeah, just taking a look at it. So we can go with the implementation. Uh, Nikhil, can you increase the font size a little bit? Because yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Is this okay, or is this fine? Yes, better, better than previous. It's better. Okay, great, great. I'm just going to the script once to, to see if there's the unexpected errors will come. So this is a working script that we have, and uh, we were recently working on this script. Okay. Okay. Great. 
So uh, we were talking about models in that the uh, inside of a presentation that uh, how models can help us in Terraform to you know uh, uh, minimize our time to writing codes instead of uh, using the reference values inside the code itself. So uh, this is some of the module structure. So you can see I have a main folder here which is called 9416, and inside that. I have uh, defined uh, my three files, which is var.tf, providers.tf, and main.tf. Okay, let's go through each file first. Uh, first, I will go to providers.tf. Okay, so uh, providers.tf is basically a, a, a provider of uh, providers from AWS. So here I have given AWS as my provider, and I have defined an alias here in uh, which is Ireland and my region as well. Okay. So this this uh, setup, which we are using module setup, it normally uh, allows us to uh, deploy our, our architecture in different region. Okay, and in that case also we don't have to rewrite our code for each region. We can use uh, variables, and we can use the uh, you know declaring variables inside our main module where we are going to launch these codes. So uh, that way uh, we can, uh, you know, standardize our process or our temp uh, Terraform files as a template, and we can use it to different users, like we used to use in cloud formation. Okay, so this is my first provider, which is AWS provider that is going to be called whenever a uh, AWS uh, related uh, Terraform file is going to be executed. Uh, then here I have my variable.tf file. So uh, this is the file where my variables are getting stored. Because these are all secret keys, access key for my uh, current exist setup. And here again, for main.tf, I have to make sure I add a provider so that this file will be properly executed. And I'm using a module named Ireland. So Ireland is an alias that I have defined over here in the providers.tf, which I'm using and which is going to launch my region, uh, my infrastructure in EU West region. So I'm calling these for, uh, variables over here for uh, the required file that I need to add for the execution. Okay. Inside then here, I have different modules. So you can see I have created a module named CloudWatch. So it is uh, the models basically allow us to, uh, you know, uh, define the uh, our Terraform scripts as per service. So if there is anything specifically to API gateways, uh, my module will be another folder inside the modules, which is API Gateway, and my all main.tf files which are needed to be executed for API Gateway will be there. And the variables that I'm going to declare for them will be here only with the values. However, we also require a variable.tf here, which only declares the uh, variables for that specific main.tf file inside the module. And other than that, we again need a providers.tf file inside the module. So all these components you can see the providers.tf. Uh, this is going to be same. The provider.tf here is the only thing that we need to change because we need to add different regions where we need to provision our infrastructure. And the main.tf is the main module uh, module inside the CloudWatch. This is the main logic which is we are going to be uh, you know execute in our infrastructure. So here in this example, we are trying to create a CloudWatch alarm. Okay, so here you can see first I have declared the resource, that resource name, which is CloudWatch. So if you go to AWS HashiCorp, sorry, the Terraform HashiCorp. So see, there are a long list of AWS providers. You can see there's guides, API gateway, access analyzer, accounts, a lot, a lot of things are there. And if you can go to any of it, the sources, let me go the link. So you can get example usage here, the code itself. And then you can add the additional argument as per your require, which are currently given inside here. Attribute references are there, timeouts are there, 
So number of things we can do with this specific script. So in the same way, what I did, I uh, so we needed to create a CloudWatch alarms for some of the services. So I use specifically this metric alarm. And you can see I added this example code inside my CloudWatch alarm creation code five. Okay. But another thing which was not added here was this decision, which is the dimension, which uh, on which specific instance I need this metric to be uh, monitored. So that was not added here, so I added it here. Okay. Then you can see this whole one block of code is going to create a alarm inside our uh, AWS uh, account where I have pointed these AWS access key and secret key right now. So that is going to be used to de uh, de uh, deploy our infrastructure. So let's go to line by line, one by one. Okay, so first is the alarm name. Definitely there should be alarm name that we can use. So I have given this alarm name and I have referenced this value from our main.tf which is the environment so the values which i have given here in the specific module are going to be referenced here when we are running the code itself so if i can say if let's say if i added a another uh, another module inside aws provider in sydney and where i have added the environment environment as a prod so that that key will be directly you know added here inside our main.tf file of the cloudwatch a cloudwatch module and it will be called here so this is a way how we can uh, you know call different values inside our code dynamically without hard coding it so our main focus when using terraform will be we should have uh, less hard coded values so that we can reuse those templates multiple time in different environments Okay, so here for a simple example, I normally used a, a lot of hard coded values here. Like uh, there is this SNS value we, you can see. So this is the uh, SNS uh, service in AWS, which normally will be get integrated with this alarm whenever anything goes wrong. Like alarm actions, you can see. So there are multiple actions in alarm. Like there is OK action, there is insufficient action, and there is alarm action. So whenever this uh, specific uh, alarm goes to uh, specific center goes to alarm action, it is going to send a mail to this ARN SNS, whoever will be there. Okay. Now let's move to after alarm name, we will move to comparison operator. So comparison operator is something that uh, is given by AWS, sorry, by HashiCorp itself, which is a greater than or equal to threshold. So normally when we go to, uh, you know, if I go to, let's say, Yes, if I'm taking this, any of the metric. Okay, so this is the metric name that we have to mention in our code. And this is our environment name. I'm gonna select the metric. 
and then there are these options so basically there is greater than greater than equal to lower or lower than equal to so these things i have uh, i have you know defined here what will be the action to uh, make sure that uh, alarm will be triggered so that will be a greater than equal to threshold in this case then the evaluation period so uh, what happens it it can be a, a you know case where it was a so small spike small spike inside the uh, metric and we uh, triggered the alarm so we have to make sure we at least you know check double check that uh, spike at least twice so if uh, that this above condition greater than equal to is getting continued for 2 minutes which is more so here you can see i have added a period which is 60 second so every 60 second it is going to check what is the current status of the cpu usage okay and in one case let's say if uh, the cpu usage is getting going higher uh, for a first minute so it is going to again wait for second minute to check if it is still high and then only it can send the alarm in case if i added here just one minute so it is going to send me alarm the next minute uh, uh, it shows that uh, the uh, usage has been uh, more than the uh, set value of the threshold but however to make sure uh, the alert is genuine we are going to keep it as 2 2 so now here's the metric name so metric name is something that uh, aws console shows us or uh, that we have defined inside the uh, our cloudwatch agent or any specific the metrics that is we required to uh, monitor we can add it here we have to make sure that uh, the uh, unit of metric is uh, pretty much uh, we are aware of it so normally what happens uh, the uh, threshold is just a value that we have to uh, mention here okay so it should be somewhere uh, the count should be in percentage or it should be a boolean or it should be something in uh, with related to data sizes so that things we have to make sure that we are normally checking before adding so the cpu usage is again uh, something which is uh, a unit in percentage uh, namespace is uh, something which is related to aws and then ec2 so the ec2 service is specifically the service that we are currently uh, handling over here in the alarm if we go to namespaces different namespaces will be available for us we just go there so it's basically a namespace for you know managing all the metrics under some group so this specific metrics comes under aws ec2 group so that that way we are going to uh, define it the aws ec2 the period will be 60 seconds so every 60 second the uh, monitor will check if the utilization is under the threshold condition or not the statistics that we have selected is the maximum the maximum number of values that has been reported in last one minute will be checked over here and the threshold is the 60 which is 60 percentage so if that process is the utilization goes above 60 percentage then only it can going to uh, alarm this uh, alarm this uh, monitor and i have added a small alarm description here that we can add when we are creating our alarm and this is the ans uh, sorry sns uh, topic arn that i have defined here which will be uh, used to sending mail in case of alarm goes off so here you can see i use this specific template i have copied it multiple times since i needed to hard code it so that is the reason i copied it but one thing i am doing here is i am going to deploy it through multiple regions at the same time so you can see the ireland region is there then there is a uh, sydney region is there which is another region and then there is sao paulo region So this is our main template for implementing the CloudWatch alarms. Uh, so based on that region-specific changes, we again have to uncomment this part. 
because we are going to use different regions in this case. Inside our main.pf file, we are going to call those regions providers. So let me type here. What is the first name? Sao Paulo. So let me just clarify this main.pf file again since I've added it. So in the providers, I have added added additional two regions where I need to set up these alarms. And in the main.tf, I'm calling this provider by their alias name that I've given here. And uh, and as per that, it is going to select the region. So here you can see I have added this region equal to wire.region. So this wire.region is going to be pointed in the providers where I've defined this region part and is going to take that from there so in that case it is going to deploy it on each region where we are using it okay let's do one thing let's uh we are going to implement the initialize command first. So when I put, click this uh, Terraform init command, you can see there are some additional folders are getting created, like .terraform file. And some other folders will be also get created when we add the pan command, like tf.state file and all these things. So let's wait for it. Okay. Now here are some additional changes I just identified that are required, which will limit me to you know uh, implement this for multiple region. So what I'm going to do right now is just implement this uh, specific two alarms inside Ireland region itself. So as per that, I'm going to remove these modules first. Comment it out. So let me first delete those also in case they were created. So I just created them before as well. I'm deleting it to just to see. Okay, these are deleted. Now, uh, since we changed some code inside our uh, files, so we need to 
first uh, again to see if, or maybe you can use Terraform validation as well. Okay, so validation is cool. Uh, let's first go to Terraform plan. Um, Nikhil, I can I interrupt? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So everyone, I have shared the community link on the chat box on Google Chat, Google Meet Chat. So please join uh, because over there you'll get all the updates and meeting recordings as well. So that is a mandate. Please join in that community. And Nikhil, I will drop off as I have another call. Okay. So you can yeah sure so one thing happened here i actually i didn't save this file so in the plan itself it showed me that it is going to add six additional uh, resources inside it so that i don't need so i'm going to just clear this thing again save it and i'm going to terraform okay so in this case you can see it shows us the this output so it uh, actually uh, defines what this symbol means so this means create and these, these all resources that are added with the plus symbols are getting created here. Okay. So let me do one thing. I'm going to Terraform and apply. So there is a catch here in apply. When we apply, it actually again uh, implement the Terraform plan file. And then it again asks, uh, asks us to whether it should be applied. So if we are good with the plan, then we can directly apply it with this command, which is auto hyphen hyphen auto hyphen approved. Okay. So what is happened? It's going to plan first and it is directly going to apply that. You can see when I'm creating, you know, implementing these uh, commands, you can see there are additional uh, files are getting created, like from state file and this log HCL, state log HCL files okay so these two added and created let's go to our console see so these are already reflected here So let's say just someone asked me, so 60% is very much high. I, I need uh, alarm when it goes to even 30%. Okay, and I don't want this name also. I want it somewhere uh, like uh, API, uh, like process monitor. Call decision. Service. Okay. So I I uh, I was suggested with some two changes that are required to be done, and I added those changes here, and also I added this. Sorry, this period is the uh, this one threshold thirty. Here, I'm going to save it. On the planet again to see if my changes are validated. Okay. So here you can see some additional uh, symbols are given. Like this is a simple to edit that specific uh, resource.
and this is the symbol which is going to destroy and create that again so it is going to destroy the two which we have created and it's going to add the two with the required parameters like we have given so here you can see this changes that have given here are specifically uh, mentioned like this is going to change to this and its name is going to change to this so these are all changes they give during the uh, execution itself one thing we have to apply it here form happen auto sorry to add it to this part. So you can see here, it also shows the destroying step, which is going to destroy. Please confirm that destroyed is done as you want to create and confirm the creation is done. So let's go to monitor. Okay, so we have added something decision service. So we are going to search for that. Yes, you can see here. The two monitors are created now with the name that we required. Okay. In the same way, I can create it in the same execution in multiple regions. Uh, some code base need to be changed. So this will be definitely my template for that. And the values that I've added here, like the instance IDs, then the ARNs, these things I can, you know, uh, very, uh, you know, use variables to call them. And I can add these variables in different models that I needed. Like for Sydney, I can give uh, different variables. In uh, Sapolo, I can give different variables. And using these variables, this template is going to create all those things inside each of these regions. So this is a you know normal example that how we can use Terraform to create simple resources and destroy them with uh, less manual intervention and uh, also uh, a lot of manual stuff that normally a human can uh, you know make mistakes in it which can lead to some major issues as well sometimes so that all things version control things and the provisioning is uh, definitely handled more easily through terraform itself and uh, yeah this is it this is the terraform execution that we can use so this is my local setup Inside my system, I have to first install the Terraform. So you can go to this site and you can download the latest version of Terraform for Windows, Linux, multiple options are there. And once you download, let's specifically, let's say for Windows, you have to uh, extract that files. Extract that file, like I have here done this here, yes. The C drive, I have my file extracted here. And in the system variable, in environment variable, I have added the path to Terraform. Okay, so from whenever I, you know, if I go to here, I can execute the Terraform commands easily. 
And you can also check the version. For and see, this is the latest. This is the latest version. No, the latest version is this one. I'm still using an older version. So again, it gives you uh, this, you know, notification as well. If you can update, you can download this and you can update it. So best thing is to you know use the updated version. Uh, most probably there is no uh, kind of a less like minimal changes in syntax part. Uh, but there are definitely, uh, you know, more execution optimization is involved in case of uh, a new version as compared to the older one. So this is the Terraform. You can go to this site and you can learn more about it. And there are a lot of tutorials uh, available on the uh, AWS or uh, on the YouTube as well. Uh, the main thing that uh, here, uh, which uh, the uh, the objective that I am following when using Terraform is to, you know, write minimal code and uh, try to make it uh, all the resources or infrastructure part as a template so that we can use it as modules. Okay. And this is more manageable in my case. So I don't have to, you know, implement, change the variable files and everything and everywhere and then not to initialize that thing. Then during initialization, it gives me some error. So these things. So modules using modules and uh, then using terraform it's uh, way much simpler and uh, way much convenient in case of code management as well so i would definitely uh, go for uh, using modules instead of using hard coded uh, entries every time when i'm deploying my code so this is it for terraform any questions you would like to ask i'm open for it I'll just stop recording in case.